that a lot of modern artists are bought in some way. Yes. Can you just explain what you mean by that? Well, I, th I think if you're, if you're part of a machine of any kind, um, you have to watch what you say. It's subsequently been number one in America three other times with Drake, Taylor Swift, and currently with Beyonce. I just want to start by thanking you for, for your incredible bravery. Hi. Good morning. What an absolute, absolute honour. Um, I just want to say here and now, not just to have two music icons, um, but also on behalf of me and my family, I, I just want to start by thanking you for, for your incredible bravery over the last 24 months. I know how hard it gets. Um, mm. As you know, I, I was a founding member of the Global Veterans Alliance to, to yeah. stand up for what we say, stand up for the kids. Mm. I know how much you get hammered <laughs> by the do. by the mainstream, and and it mm. takes a toll, guys. It really, it does. really does. Yeah, it does. You know, I agree. I agree. It, it's yeah. it's it's horrible to have things said about you that are untrue, and pretty much everything I've seen. Um, and so I, I I just I really wanted to thank you. I thought we'll keep the um, the last couple of years of shit. Let's call them shenanigans. Yeah, yeah for now. we'll. We'll take that to, at the latter part of the podcast because, okay. um, you know, it, it's just an honour to have have you both on the show. Thank you. And um, my God, I mean, you really, you've really smashed it out of the park, haven't you? For um, occasion, yeah. Yes, we have. We, we have our moments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely have our yeah, moments. A bit far and between sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But the, um, the speaking out thing wasn't particularly um, difficult for us because, one, it seemed obvious. It just seemed like a natural thing to do. Um, and, and also we had, we had come up historically um, against such um, negativity in the, in the business generally mm. that we were kind of used to it, actually. Yeah, we were. When we did, um, going back a bit, when we, done, when we released I'm Too Sexy, I'm Too Sexy wasn't signed. It didn't, it didn't have a record deal. It was just promoted uh, and the promotion company assigned, uh, just set up a little white label to, to, to service it. Yeah. So it was, it, it, when it was number two in the UK and doing the rounds through Europe, um, it, it, it wasn't really, there wasn't actually a record deal in place. Uh, and the animosity from the record companies, even when it was a hit, was quite extraordinary. Mm. The animosity from some areas of the media, um, because the record had been turned down by all the record labels, and some record labels didn't just turn it down. They were <laughs> visceral in their hate for the record and us, <laughs> particularly people like Island Records, who just could not spit enough poison at us. And I don't know what, I don't know what maybe the guy had a bad morning. I don't I know. know. I used to have all the faxes, but I, sadly I don't have them anymore. Um, and, and what happened was, I think what's, 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 what's insult to injury is the track was, was refused by everybody, but the, it wasn't just a hit. It's become, it's become a bit of a... Um, an, an industry on its own, and and it has its own mark. Um, and whether people like the record or not, it's kind of irrelevant now. We, we we've um, you know, we have, it's apart from it being number one in America or on its own right. It's subsequently it's subsequently been number one in America three other times with Drake, Taylor Swift, and currently with Beyonce. Mm -hmm. So the record has been given the seal of approval by, and whether you like them or not, it doesn't matter. By some of the biggest selling artists in history. Um, so it's um, it, it's it's a funny old uh, uh, enigma. Is is our true sexy? Also, yeah, and also I think I think yeah. it, it created an image about us. Yes, it did. Yeah, I mean we sold it in a way that we we weren't thinking. We're not, we, we didn't actually think about it. I mean, you know, we took our shirts off and, and and camped around like a couple of idiots and didn't really think honestly, <laughs> which we had done before. Which we'd mean, done before, but we didn't really know. think about it. And it's only you know it's that first to market thing. It's that first. That's it how is, people yeah, remember first to market. First yeah. to market. Yeah. You do, um, you do, you do, Rose. You just described a, a typical night out in in, in the Royal Marines. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Taking the shirt off, yeah. and pulling about. And pulling about. Yes, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Good point. So, so I think the um, I, I mean, in, in fact, we we were asked up until a, a few years ago, we were still being asked whether we wrote the stuff. Yeah. 
And, um, and I think because of sexy as a, as a kind of track in a way, and deeply deeply as well, the assumption was we were probably a bit thick and probably got just got lucky. Yeah, it was. I think there was an element of that in the whole thing. Um, and, and and strangely, I, I, I think it was Dustin Hoffman who once said that you'll never get an Oscar for a comic role. Mm. And um, and I think that applies to music. If you make yeah. music that cheers people up, you will never get thanked for it. I mean, when we were in the Brits in ninety. 90- Two, we were backstage at the Brits. We knew we were being, we knew we were being, um, not getting an award for anything. We knew that because we weren't part of the British phonographic industry, we weren't part of that cartel. And we were number one in the UK, number one in about 40 countries, and number one in America. And they still refused to give us an award. Yeah. And, um, and it was, and at that point, we knew, yeah, we're just not part of this game. Um, also, the industry. Well, the industry is incredibly conservative, the, the entertainment industry, in our experience. It's, it's populated by artists who um, seek constant validation and approval. These are not strong, courageous people. They're generally quite weak. Um, and it's populated by a business that, that, that focuses on the exploitation of that need. Um, so it's when, when people talk about, uh, I've got an interesting question for you in a minute. Um, one thing we think is lacks in the music industry is these, most people don't have courage. The, it's they, 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 you know, people think, oh, so and so is a real, a real rebel because they're in a punk band. Well, you know, smashing up hotel rooms, wearing a ripped t shirt and a, and, a, and, a, and a safety pin, and charging it to the label, and charging it to the label <laughs> is not, it's not much, uh, and signing to a major record company is not very <laughs> punk at all. Um, and um, so I, I think punk is doing what is doing what. Yeah, you know, more than what the Depeche Mode did, which was they stuck with their original independent label, and what uh, Kasabian have done, and that's much more of a punk attitude. And um, and Marillion, um, people forget how how ahead of the curve they were with their with their um, fan, with their fan base. So it's called what's it called? Um, it's, there's an expression when you deal directly with your fan base, which is what they did way before anyone else. Um, but surely, in, with your history, you must have been surrounded by people who did have courage. But you're not seeing it now. Was that not true? Oh my gosh, mate! You bang on the money. <laughs> I mean, uh, but I try not to make this long-winded. But through, through the Global Veterans Alliance, a lot of people have said to me, "You know, when are the when are the military going to turn on the? <laughs> on, you know what they perceive the government? I'd say it all goes a lot, Way lot, higher. lot, yeah. lot hot, 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 higher than and." Yeah. I tried to explain to people that, that, you know, a lot of us, that the military kind of recruiting bowl, as it were, mm. is very often from quite damaged people. I hold oh, my hand, okay. you know, going right. to hold my, hold my hand up as a prime example. Uh, highly traumatic childhood. Some, not, not, not everybody. We're not, we're not generalizing no, here, but, no, but, but, no. but, but this is why we, when you see post military, you see, the, the old PTSD thing comes up. Yes, you do. Um, with respect to the last couple of years, you need to see it. You, you need to see what's going on. You, you do, need yeah. to see what's really going on. And a, a lot of veterans find that really hard. They're still like queen and country. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. okay, right, right. If, if the BBC tell me this, it's, it's, that's, <laughs> Ooh, you know, they, 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 they sent us to Iraq, they sent us to Afghanistan, blah, 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 blah. blah. And, and, and this is why, um, I say to people, no, then they're, they're not going to come charging over the hill on their, right, you know, okay. in their what shining armor. Um, uh, it, 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 it really doesn't sort of work. <laughs> am, no. am, am I making sense, fellas? Yes, sure, yes. Yeah. I, 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 what we both thought, I think, is that if this was a a, um, a conflict between, you know, and you could physically see it. There were, you know, there were soldiers coming over the hill. There were bullets flying in the air, in the air, and the boots marching over the bridge. I think people would be much more easily motivated to deal with it. I think one of the big problems is that this is an attack that you can't really see. This is, an, it's all, it's in the air. It's, it's a kind of feeling, and to get people to understand that that's just as real as bullets flying through the air is very, very difficult. People who don't understand the demo thing, thought that it was about changing official policy. It was never really about that for me. It was, it was showing solidarity with people who felt the same. And I yes. remember talking to one elderly lady who was from Southampton, and she found going to the demos incredibly 
invigorating because she suddenly realised that she wasn't the only one who thought like she thought. Mm. Yes, it but is, it's yeah. just as real. Mm. Um, and the, you only have to do the tiniest bit of reading um, on, on, the, on the socials of different people like, uh, you know, I don't know, Dirk Duesberg or McCulloch or whoever it is to know that t- to get to grips with this is, is, a, is a, it's a spirit. It, it is actually a spiritual conflict this it is yeah um that's what and that's that's what it is and it, i think it's very difficult to motivate people um in that regard i think people and also i think people who are you know you grow up with good friends you grow up hopefully with a reasonable family you you know you have a good you have a job that you quite like whatever it is it's very hard to imagine that there are people out there who are this malicious <laughs> malicious yeah mm-hmm. you know it's very hard to get your head around that i mean i'm, I'm reading um kennedy's book on fauci and the history of some of these people, Gallo and Fauci and Gates, these it's people, extraordinary. it's extraordinary. And what they did in the third world, in places like Kampala and uh, and um, in Africa, it, it, it is, uh, you know, it takes your breath away, actually. Yes. Um, so, I, and I think that's very difficult for a lot of people to grasp, that these people are that bad. Yeah, yeah. We, yes. We, 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 we have a neighbour who's well-educated, quite a successful actor, and he knows something's going on, but doesn't know what. He's been, he's had his jabs and everything, so he can work. And he cannot process the idea that a politician would do anything but work in his benefit. Mm-hmm. He, can't, he, he can't think, well, why, why would they have self interest? I don't understand. I said, well, they do. They don't care about you, mate. They just don't care. You're just a useless, you're, 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 you're a, a useless eater or a useless idiot. It depends which way you want to look at it. Um, and um, I think um, I think I think that journey for people. I've been duped. I've been lied to by people I used to trust, i.e., the media, uh, government officials, even even big pharma to a degree. You know, we've all trusted them. We've all taken paracetamol and ibuprofen, and I've never uh, your hands on. Oh, I've never t- got a paracetamol and thought, hmm. What's in this? I better get this tested. <laughs> yes. You know, I haven't. I've, ta- I've, I've, gone, exactly. I've gone to the pharmacy. I've bought my, par- my paracetamol and I've taken it and because it's trust. You, you've, I've trusted these people. And um, and now I don't trust them. And um, and, and I do think, um, you know, I was I, I had a tooth extraction recently and I was speaking to a dentist and I'll get you these antibiotics. And I went, well, could you explain to me about these antibiotics? I need to know any possible side effects. I want to know what why do, you're prescribing these and not others. And he was great. He was really good and really informative. Um, but I wouldn't have done that three years ago. I was just, oh, okay, you recommend those, fine, I'll take those. And I think there's this, the, the trust for a lot of people has gone. And I think for the people where it hasn't gone, the journey to where they're going to have to, and they will at one point, going to have to go, do you know what? We're getting screwed. This is the biggest global psyop in history. And um, and I think it's, it, that's a huge step. And I think particularly mainstream media is still mm-hmm. dragging their heels to, to get, you know, to, 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 uh, to come to the party. You know, you see them on, you know, you've got these dreadful clowns like, you know, James Whale and uh, Nick Ferrari and these, these idiots, you know, just peddling the same old crap, you know, and, um, and, and, and full of misinformation and lies. They lie about us all the time. Um, but um, f- apparently that's okay for them. That they're, they're they're part of this machine. They can lie by how they ever they want. But um, if you're if you've got an alternative point of view, you're instantly a tin for hat. And those, as you, I'm sure you know, those phrases are still going around. Yeah. The, the, one of the pro- I think we the um, one of the things I, I read the other day. So it's, it's a quote I haven't forgotten. And so it's a quote, I can't remember who said it, but the quote is "Man is wolf to man." Yes, yeah, good quote. And that's the the, 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 the you know viruses are not the problem. Um, pandemics are not the problem. Germs are not the problem. We are the problem. Man is the problem. Mm-hmm. And until we sort that out, um, we're never going to get any relief. No. Uh, we need we need to understand the importance of thinking for ourselves. We need to understand the importance of valuing your own body um, and and treating it with the respect it deserves. Because it's, it's a machine that will have to last you hopefully three score years and ten at least. Um, but over the years, probably since the Second World War and before and before. We have got used to deferring to the government for everything. Tell me what to eat. Tell me what to watch. Tell me where to stand when I get money out of the ATM. Tell me, tell me everything I need to know to lead a nice, safe, comfortable life. Mm-hmm. The more you defer, the less independence you have, and you get used to it. And I think the somebody said the other day, which I think is quite an interesting theory, which is that this whole COVID thing <clears throat> happened far too far too soon. The, the, the virus happened and this great reset agenda was pushed on the top of it 
Um, the problem with that was it, it, it brought into its, its, its kind of uh, arena a generation that wasn't easily pushed around, a, an older generation that had, had a longer memory. If, if this had all happened 10 to 15 years' time, when it was all essentially millennials who had got used to convenience, used to deferring, used to, used to that, you know, you know, I hate to use the word snowflake, but that, that, that weakness, if you like, and that dependence, it would have been a much easier task. I think what's made it difficult, people like you, have made it much more difficult because we're of a generation that remembers what it's like when you didn't have to ask yes. where you can have a smoke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you when you didn't have to ask, I mean, when you see footsteps on the you know painted feet on the floor at an ATM, <laughs> can you please stand like? I mean, really? Yeah. And yeah. people actually and do. People actually do. Yeah. And, and it's extraordinary. I was, in, I was in Waitrose. I don't shop there anymore, but I was in Waitrose uh, and. Um, um, the lady behind him, in front of me, chastised me. and said, "Could you stand back?" She pointed at the. This is going back last year. And she pointed at the, the blue or please blue with the stickers with. And I, and I just looked at her. What are you talking about? She's looking. And I said, "No, you you want to you want to move forwards. Knock yourself out. I'm not standing back." Well, there's a, you know, a, fuck you. There's a, a local shop, and they had taken all their stickers off the floor last year. Um, oh yes, yeah. yeah. They took all their stickers off the floor, and um, it's, it's sort of looks like a lantiki kind of uh, help, help, homeware shop, you know. And um, there was a lady standing. She just walked into the shop and just was standing there, not doing anything. So one of the guys went up and said, "Excuse me, can I can I help you?" And she said, "Well, yes, you've taken all the things. I don't know which way do you want me to go." <laughs> you know, that's out, yeah, out. <laughs> actually, <laughs> so that I think it's. Uh, I mean, I know we want to talk about the band and all that stuff, but I think. It, it, this um, this level of uh, compliance has been really really interesting to me. Mm. And I remember my, our father was in in in, uh, in the Merchant Navy during the Second World War, and um, he was convinced that it, i.e., the Nazi, the whole sort of um, smitching on your neighbours thing, couldn't happen here in the UK. The UK was 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 gifted in some special way that it was um, it was immune to this kind of style thing. Thing, what I realise, I'm pleased Dad's gone now because he what what it would shows is that it can happen here. People will snitch on their neighbours. People will shout at you in the street. I hope they can breathe. Wouldn't want to bring anything down in super spreaders. I bet you voted for Trump, didn't you? Woo! Truckers! Woo! Yeah, they don't wear masks. We don't cover their masks. Woo! People will be generally pretty vile they will tell you uh, don't come to my christmas party because you're not vaccinated you know do you know what I mean? so i think it's revealed to me certainly that this is not quite the country that i thought it was that's yeah you know. yeah yes and uh, it's always hard fellas because could we broadcast on certain platforms that like literally you got to be we got to be so careful what we say we have got other platforms by the way where we can just actually have a bloody yeah the chat that our, yes. our, our children bloody deserve right but um th there's a lot going on here you know with respect to the politicians and the country structure it, it it you know if anyone thinks politicians are in control of all this all you've got to think is that there's a remote island in i don't know bloody polynesia somewhere yeah. and they've been walking you know they've never seen like a westerner maybe and yet they've been walking around with their underpants on their face, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, because the TV told them to. Yeah. The, the TV did tell them to. That's yeah. Exactly and right. I, I, guys, I say underpants, I'm, I'm, I, I'm just, I, I'm not trying to uh, criticize anybody. I'm just trying to highlight the, the notion that mm. you can save humanity by putting things on you. And, and I, I just want to also go a little bit further. And again, I've got to be so careful what I say, but in, in science of which medicine is obviously a part, mm -hmm. um, everything is a theory. It is. Absolutely. Right? Yep. And there are several different theories of health yep. out there, but there's two main ones. The one I subscribe to, or, or let's just I, I try and make this really simple so there's one theory it's like there's a bogeyman and it can jump from me there into fred mm -hmm. and then fred into oh jesus christ get your underpants on your face we're gonna save you Matt. you can listen to someone called anton bachamp yeah talk, talks about terrain theory how important it is to keep our body 
show yep. this one all the time to my get your ph strips folks right test your body see see how acidic your tissues are okay. right i've done this for almost 20 years now never been Ill. I, and i used to get ill three times a year I, right. I hated it right since i started to have a green smoothie for lunch pile right. on the vegetables for, yeah. for, for yeah. me tea i've got some green powder that really really just keeps me tip top like i've never ever been sick so mm. Who do I go for? Do I go for the guy that goes, ah, oh, no, you don't have to look at you. You, you can eat from McDonald's three times a day. It's not down to you, Chris. It's like yeah. there's a bogeyman and it can jump. Or do I go for the guy that goes, no, it's really important to look after your it is. bodily environment. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. also to stay away from contaminants in our um, uh, society, community, you know, out there. There's, there's other stuff. Yeah. I mean, simple, silly example, car fumes all day. We got, we, we have so many airplanes go over, overhead every mm. single day. They chug up the sky. Yeah, they do. I don't know what, I'm guessing it's some carbon, carbon mm. based shits coming out of these planes. Mm. We're a car, do. we're a carbon based structure. That's not, not a good match. No. And when you think that what a lot of people have been experiencing, I'm not going to say at which time in history, but it's essentially a respiratory disorder. Yes. There's other things that haven't even been looked at. That's right? true. And then one step, one, you know, taking an, a, another step is the fact that the politicians, and I wanted to ask you guys about the music industry because mm. we have, we, you know, we have a certain thing like going on, on there yes. That, yes. That, that a lot of us have become you know switched on to mm. yeah. is there seems to be a glass ceiling we have all these people that can do the job you know in the music industry yeah. incredible musicians mm. you only have to go to an open mic night and see that this person should have a bloody album they, right. they they're yes. just incredible but of course there's hundreds of thousands more that yeah, should so so i think in society they create this glass ceiling and you can only get above it if you kowtow. I think there's to, a degree of truth to that. Yeah. To, to yeah. the agenda. Mm. This is why we see people like Boris, who I don't doubt he's he's probably not a bad bloke, but he's under so much pressure. Probably, uh, you know, the intelligence services are very good at getting, let's say, information on people. Mm, yeah. I think we maybe saw this with a certain prime minister during the uh, the Iraq war. Yeah. Yeah. Do, I, do I say any more? Mm. And they go, oi, matey, if you don't tow this line, um, we're going to, there's some photographs, think, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I mean, if you listen to, there are lots, lots of CIA assets out there that, and um, whistleblowers like William Binney and, Ray McGovern, who will who, um, are a testament to, to this sort of coercion that mm. goes on, and they've got you know firsthand experience and and, um, and have seen this. I think um, I don't agree with you. I, I think Boris Johnson is actually inherently a bad person. I don't think I don't think you'd find him a good friend or a loyal friend or particularly a loyal partner. That's for <laughs> sure. Um, so I, I I don't think he's a, I, I actually don't think he's a good guy. That's just my gut. I've never met him. I'm just my gut feeling. Um, and I think, but I do think in the music industry, from our experience, we've always worked to the margins. We always, we've never signed a major record deal. Um, we've worked with major labels through, um, through smaller concerns, but we've never signed a major record deal. Uh, and although we were given lots of opportunities because obviously I'm too sexy was unsigned and everywhere. So, the, you know, the people that had hated us six months before came in and offered us lots of money. Um, and we decided not to do that. Um, and, I th and it's because we don't really like doing what doing, we don't like doing what we've been told. And we don't like being pushed around. So, and we, but we did do that in 91, 92 through to 93. We did say, when they said jump, we, we did say how high. We grew tired of that very quickly. And mm. in 95, we walked away and set up our own record label and worked, you know, against the odds since then. Um, and um, I, I think it's the sort of band you are. Some people absolutely love the fame, will do anything. Whoops, will do anything for the fame. Um, they, they will. Um, kowtow to their label and their manager because they think that
they know best. In some cases, maybe they do. But I know, I think you see certain artists and I think they've definitely had, you know, the tap. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I, th I think that's definitely the case. Um, we were co courted into the States when the band was number one. We were definitely courted with that in mind. Um, we were offered several things, parties, situations to get involved in. We just pff, didn't really care, weren't that impressed with it. Um, and we had, we, we're also quite, we're quite neighborhood people. You know, we, if, if we'd been really, really ambitious, we would have plotted up in LA, got, an, got a local manager, got a local agent and worked and work the room. But we didn't. We were much more in, in, interested in getting home, bidding our... I just wanted to go home. Yeah, working in our gym. <laughs> and we, we like, you know, we, didn't, we never intended to become celebrities. So yeah, when the, the usual haters get on board online and, you know, they try and slag us off, what they don't understand, mostly because they're probably bots or a bit thick, is that we, we actually did this by choice. Choice. We actually stepped back in the mid-90s by choice. Um, yeah, that's what we chose to do. Um, lots of artists do. Um, and uh, lots of artists don't. It's, um, it, 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 it was down to us. So I think you either, you know, some people really love that game and they want to embrace it and they want to, you know, they want to be at the Grammys and they want to be at the you know, Elton John after Hollywood after well, show. And that's that, that's up to them. Interestingly, the, certainly uh, not for us. No, at the Brits, uh, when we didn't get the award for the best whatever it was, it was we we stayed there and, and you know for the rest of the evening and it was our label that stormed out in a huff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were on the was, ego. They were the was, one with ego. Yeah. Was yeah. that the year when Brandon got had a bit of a ruckus on stage? Uh, we there was a couple of years. We did ninety two and ninety three. We did maybe ninety four. I can't remember. Um, I, I don't know. It was when KLF did the um, the sheep thing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yes. and it was when one band got um, White Noise Terror to perform on their behalf. Or maybe that, that, might, it, that might have been KLF. Didn't yeah. somebody hit John Prescott? Ah. Uh, was that no, no, Well, no, there was that band um, who chinned um, uh, Philip Schofield, didn't they? Um, right. Carter. Uh, uh, oh, it's Unstoppable Sex Machine. Yeah, Carter. Yeah, one yeah. of them walked on chinned Philip Schofield. <laughs> Pushing back the frontiers of music, otherwise known as Carter, and I think they're still smashing that at the back somewhere. Now, not only... <laughs> so, uh, you know, yeah. the, the thing is, one of the, going back to the music business very quickly, one of the things that, in a way, the music business is a reflection of, this, of, of the culture that we live in. And the culture that we're currently living in is a very, very compliant culture. It's a very safe culture. It's a very vanilla um, we don't much we don't much like people who kick up the dust. We don't really like them. That we find them, um, you know, uncomfortable. So you wouldn't get a punk movement um, happening now no. because it's just too edgy. It's too out there. It's too difficult to control. You know, um, there's a like, there's a new artist called Youngblood that the some the New York Times thinks is is punk. It's about as punk as Adele. Yeah. It's just not punk. Punk is something completely different. It's organic. It's, yeah, punk is an organic thing. You can't invent it. So um, I think I think there's a lot of uh, I think there's a lot of, of that around. I think that the, that's why the music scene now is so I think at least is is relatively bland. Mm. And the stuff that we grew up on, people like Alex Harvey and you know Sparks and all those weird and wonderful artists, uh, it happened because you took the, the politicians weren't in the way, health yeah. and safety wasn't in the way. Well, also, the, the, it, the labels were more independent. You, you know, now you have Universal, but obviously back then you had Polydor exactly. and. Vertigo and all these Mercury and whatever it was, it was all these independent, not, not independent, much, but these separate labels. Um, and now it's much more of a conglomerate. Um, and, and everybody has associations to third party affiliates, affiliates, the sponsors. And, and we, we had it not long ago. We were picked up by, um, uh, we did a deal with, with a, with a well-known manager. We thought we'd give it a shot and we walked away after about four months, which was horrible. Um, but anyway, um, during that time, what, what happened is, is that we got suddenly signed up by quite a well-known, um, rock and roll agency, music agency. And, um, they would only, the minute we sacked our manager, they sacked us. And so, that, <laughs> and, and that is what happens. And, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that we, everyone was. We were offered a major deal through this management. We we refused the deal. We sacked the management. We and we were dumped by our agent. And everyone thought we were mental. We're not mental. We just don't want to be part of that thing. And if and if all you care about, and if the manager said, "Oh, I want to make you a household name again," I said, "I don't want to be a household name again." Like bleach. Want, yeah, exactly. Like bleach. <laughs> you know. Guys, has it has it been upsetting for you? Because I I've got mates in the music industry, and no. we've had people on the show, and. 
and in order to keep above this bloody glass see the next thing you know they're doing you know they're pushing uh i can't remember the the, the governing group about how is it the world health organization the next yeah, yeah. thing they're on bloody te- i don't watch mainstream media i'm sure you guys don't but, very, but very, from very. what i gather they're on the mainstream media and they're doing adverts for the yeah, old yeah. uh the old yeah, you know the jab yeah they are and it's like it's i mean i know it i know it care. upsets you well, it, it, it doesn't really upset me. I, I, these, the people that did it were disappointing long before that. Yeah. Um, the, the, the surprise, the, the people that did surprise me were Rage Against the Machine, who insisted on people with vax to come to their show. Same with Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. I found Paul McCartney disappointing, not because he took the jab. That's his choice. I think any artist has the choice to do that. But when you start advising and, and, and suggesting that other people do what you do, I think that's I think that's an abuse of your position, and people would claim that we've done that, but we've never told anyone to get jabbed or not get jabbed. We just tell people what we think, and you've got to make up your own mind. Um, just be informed. It's not much yeah, to ask, yeah. you know. It's just but, been sorry, but, but if you go into the a hospital and you know you just you, you're going to have your ears pinned back, right, in an operation, you, you would ask the guy, "What? Okay, what's what, what, what's what in, what's entailed in this operation? How? What's the recovery situation? What is there any kind of?" post-operative care that I need. You know, you ask basic questions, but for some inexplicable reason, people just rolled up their sleeve, put an experimental therapy into their arm, and then wondered why other people start thinking, well, you're, you must be crazy. Well, put, they put experimental therapy into their arm, administered by non-medical people in, in the most part. <laughs> yeah. um, a very good friend of ours um, who works within the NHS was asked to oversee a mass vaccination centre um, he went down there and, and did that, and he had to close it down after a few hours because of the aphylactic, um, anaphylactic. anaphylactic fits. Um, then he started questioning the people uh, administering the drug, and he found out they were um, air crew, all furloughed. The, the AI staff. Yeah, they, yeah they're, 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 they've been furloughed. I'm sure it be, I don't know who it was. Oh. But, but um, um, and so he said, well, tell me what your instructions you've had. And then, then he saw the needles. The needles were, were too long and too thick. They, were, they bought the wrong needles. Um, or been given the wrong needles. Uh, he said, well, show me how, what, how you've been taught. He said, well, they've been taught completely wrong. And this guy is an orthopedic specialist, uh, injection specialist is what he does. And uh, he said, I've been doing this, jabbing people 25 years, never seen an anaphylactic fit in my life. And he said, these people don't know what they're doing. They're just, so what they, what they were doing, they were hitting marrow, they were hitting bone. So not marrow, they're hitting bone. They were hitting um, arteries. Um, and um, and he said it was an absolute shit show. So he decided to close it down, close it down in four or five hours and refused to go back there. And he said, but it opened up again with someone over, someone else overseeing it. And the NHS turned a blind eye. Um, and I think I, I, I think the the recklessness with people, people have been reckless with their own lives, with their own bodies. Been, the government have been reckless and the media have been reckless and so have the big pharma. And I think that's why we're seeing so many, you know, sudden, you know, sudden adult deaths. And, you know, when, when was there ever a time you see a pro athlete fall over and clutch his heart? When? You know, yeah. people, you know it, 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 did, it didn't happen. And are you familiar? Um, I, I think it would really wake people up. If you go to the Office of National Statistics mm. and you type in how many people actually died from this thing, say between, I think, the, I can actually get it up here on my sc- screen. Perhaps, Luke, if you're watching, you can flag this up for us. But, uh, you know, between February 2020 to December 2021, right? this is people purely of the thing right not right. we're not we're not talking concomitant you know mm. like diabetes okay. yeah, right. yeah yeah um and and also remember folks this is everything in science is theoretical so this is if you if if you think this thing exists is what i'm trying to say yes yes um so under the age of uh from zero uh uh, five years old and i'm just gonna like paraphrase a bit right. like nobody yes nah, nah. this is in the U- uk no from f- five years old to nine years old nah, nah. nobody nobody 10 to 14 one girl right, right. okay remember if this is if you go yes. for the old louis pasta germ yes. yeah um 
15 to 19. Oh, my God. All those kids have been targeted by NHS <laughs> adverts, you know, putting it on mm. TikTok, yeah. telling yeah. them, don't you let the ship down, you know. Yeah. One boy. Right. Sorry. One yeah. teenager. Apologies. Right. Um, you know, it, 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 and it goes on and on. And even yeah. if you get into the 35 to 39 year bracket, right. yeah. combined, uh, it, 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 it they, they sent 57. Now, really? 57 out of a population of 66 million. What 66 million? Yeah, I you know. think what we've been through? I think people would just be really, really surprised yeah. and go, yeah. "Really? Yeah." Oh. Mm. No, they don't want to. They don't want to hear that because I see people all the time as as an argument posting stuff from mainstream media. They'll say one and a half million people died. No, they did not. But they don't want to hear it because they want they want a figure that is disastrous because it supports the fact that they followed the narrative. That's what they. That's the evidence they adhered to, and they don't want to drop that. And also, it was only relatively recently, within the last sort of six to nine months. The, the two words with and from became yes. um, became you know significant yeah and um you know that this uh, you know the, the, i think it was a guy in florida i think uh who um tested positive for covid but he was he was killed in a motorbike accident yeah and he went down <laughs> he went down as a covid mm. death mm. so there was a the, i think you know it's very hard to get your head around the degree to which this has been manipulated mm. I've never believed that, neither of us have, that COVID was a myth. I, it's a real virus and it's out there. I believe that. But if you look at particularly people like Peter McCulloch, who's, whose entire effort at the beginning was to prevent hospitalisation, to use repurposed drugs and off-label drugs to prevent people going into hospital, stay at home, take these drugs, you know, take some time out, you'll be fine. Because once you go into hospital, once you're on a ventilator, you know, it doesn't look good. And he was, I think he was expecting to be treated like some kind of hero because he had developed this kind of protocol to, to help people, you know, to rent people getting um, hospitalised. And um, there was no enthusiasm for that because it, hospitals were, particularly in America, I don't know what the situation is in the UK, but in America, hospitals were being paid cash for every COVID patient they admitted. They were, they were then being given extra cash for every COVID patient they admitted to ICU. The whole thing was a scam. And... Mm. Um, you know, I mean, in Czechoslovakia, you had a half an hour with your favourite prostitute if you had the jab. Mm. There's a statistic I mean, here that I, I saw the other day, and it's a UK Gov a statistic, and it's children are 4,423% more likely to die of any cause and 3,633% um, more likely to die of COVID than unvaccinated children. That's the degree their immune system has been screwed. And that, this is a, and that and that is from the government. Um, and also now you've got um, you've got a study which is uh, excuse me very quickly. Um, the, the this is from the uh, control. What is who's who's this from? I can't quite see. Sorry. Anyway, it, they've now decided, and it's been agreed by the CDC, that regular use of ivermectin could be good for you. <laughs> no. Who would have thought? Huh? Who would have thought? What a shocker! Yeah, yeah exactly. you, you mean that drug that's been tested for decades and is on the list of um, the? Oh, um, that's just animal paste. <laughs> just <laughs> horse yeah, paste. Just horse paste. I yeah, mean, yeah. really freaking hell, these I people. And I think one, of, as you know, going on, one of the most amazing things about this whole affair has been the degree to which the mass media have just towed the line. By, but I mean, imagine what we would not know if it wasn't for social media. Yeah. I'm not here today uh, um, as a representative of anything. I do not speak for any group or organisation, although I am sometimes described, as I say, as a gay activist. I regard this personally as too limiting. I believe strongly, really strongly, in individual liberty, our right to privacy, which is currently being eroded every day, and our right within reason to determine our own futures, free from interference from the state, organised religion, or any other group, in fact, that thinks it knows what's best for me. Just imagine there was no social media and we were relying completely on the BBC, Sky and the press. Oh, man. Which we have done before. Which we have done before. Yeah. Imagine if there had been selfies going on and, I, and um, iPhones in the Second and First World War. Do you think? Imagine <laughs> the horrors we would have really seen. And imagine the take-up. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So I think, same with yeah. Vietnam, of course. Yeah, same with Vietnam. So I think um, that, for me, has been absolutely staggering. And I, rem I should never forget reading an article by, I, I, didn't, I read some of it, by Andrew Neil, which I think was in the Mail, 
And it was the headline was something like, now it's time to punish the unvaccinated. Yeah. These these guys, these these, 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 the guys you mentioned, like the uh, and friends, we love everybody on this channel. We, we, <laughs> we, we're not persecuting. It, it, it's not about that. It's understanding the, the, the whole, whole picture. But when you see people like the James Wales, oh, James Wales, uh, uh, who's the other chap that does the daytime, daytime program? Well, there's Steve Nolan and Nick Ferrari and uh, Gaunt, John Gaunt and uh, James O'Brien. Who's that dreadful woman with a face for radio? So many. You see. Oh, Sheila Doherty. Why don't you poison their coffee? Yeah, why don't you poison their coffee? Like yeah. 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 I'm, yeah, I'm trying to He's think a... of the, the other guy. He has a very popular daytime. I don't watch mainstream, so it's... Okay, it, 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 Not uh, Jeremy well, Vine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Jeremy Vine, right. yeah, yeah. I mean... He's another one, yeah. And also, um, <laughs> there was the chap, I can't remember his name, but he... Um, uh, we had Tommy Robinson on the show um recently and his, right. his his crew have been really speaking out uh, right. you know a, a lot about this and he come under attack from this bbc reporter but what the bbc reporter didn't know is he's been filmed the person he was speaking to was was recording him oh, right. on behalf of tommy right and it was just i would say pure evil mm -hmm. a bit strong but the, the there's a certain like character, isn't there? That, there that is. if if you've got that character, you're going to be retained at the BBC. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to do really, like yeah. really, really well. Mm. And it's and it's weird because I wonder, like, have they given up on love and kindness and empathy and learning shit, or are they just like really fucking horrible? I, I, I think they've been horrible for over two hundred years. You mean who? The oh, media, oh, the elite, the elite. Oh, I see. They've always been horrible. Um, it's just now we know how old they are. I think the, I mean, for me, um, I'm, I'm conflicted with the BBC. For me, it's BBC News that seem to have lost their way. Yeah. There's lots of, uh, we, we've done a lot of work with BBC Regional, and I think they do a really good job. And and, and they've been really good to us. And then we've been, we've spoken out on re various regional shows, and they haven't tried to censor us. They've been very cool. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's, I think, you know, BBC is a big organisation like the NHS, huge organisation. And I think within it, there's some really great people. Sadly, the people who seem to be the most unpleasant seem to get the loudest voice. Um, and I think that's a shame. And I, th I think the BBC will live, live to regret that. But that's my opinion. And I think it's, a, I think it's damaged their brand, which I think, is, you know, which is mm. criminal. Wow. Really, so. I mean, who, who's, I don't know anyone who still pays a license fee. I mean, no. I, I, I wouldn't do it. No. To be no. honest, after certain events, can we say that might or might not take a place in America or about, yeah. I don't know, 20, oh, fuck it, I'm, I'm not pe supporting people that, you know, I want to well, say... To, uh, well, I know what you mean. My thing with the BBC uh, licence fees, I think, and I agree, I think this with taxation too, everything should be ring fenced. Yeah, I want to see what's spent on I want to see what... I'm quite happy to pay for BBC documentaries. I'm quite happy to pay for BBC drama. Regional. And regional. Mm. I don't want to pay for BBC Sport because I never watch it. Gary I don't want to pay, I don't want to pay for BBC News because I don't believe it. So if they could send me their breakdown of where the of, of the things I can contribute towards, mm. I'd be more than happy to do that. But I don't want to pay a, give them a blank check to spend it in any way they like. So they end up giving Gary, Gary Linick a five hundred million pounds a day <laughs> to, to, to read an auto cue. Yeah. I'm not interested. Yeah. So I think that, and it's the same for me. It's the same with taxation. You know, at the moment, what we do is we pay our tax into this gaping yaw of the, of the treasury, and we expect them to distribute it in a way that makes sense. Or fair. Or unfair. Mm. I don't want to do that. I think they should explain, like they do with like, when you get your community charge thing. Mm. They tell you what they spend on police. They tell you what they spend on water and everything. I want that for general taxation as well. Mm. Part of the reason I started a podcast is I, I thought, do you know what? I'm going to get to chat to fascinating people, like my idols, people that I admire, I respect. And, and it's been, gosh, you know, you put out to the universe, it gives you back tenfold. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's just incredible. And I'm I'm so I'm gonna say it again, I'm so humbled um to meet you. In fact, look. Well, <laughs> I, I had a shave today. Good man. So, so did I. A lot yeah. a lot of people don't know that Wright said Fred is actually free brothers. Well, I know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a well kept secret. It's a well kept secret, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, come on, guys! You had a US number one. That is, mm. 
uh, the gold standard for UK artists, isn't it? Yes, How it many is. people have moved to LA to try to achieve and the, and, yeah. and, and how was it? Did you take that in your stride or did you have a beer or, or, or something we, else? It we were kind of scary. Yeah, we, we were um, working really hard. So we weren't really given the opportunity to sit back and enjoy it. And you, you've got a, about your third hit single. Yeah. Yes, I know. Three I hit know. wonders. Three hit wonders. Three hit wonders, yeah. Somebody actually said to us the other day, they said, so, so what do you say to people who say you're just two hit wonders? And it's going to go on forever, then, isn't it? So what do you say to people who just say, you say you're 57 hit wonders? You know? uh, we've only enjoyed it more looking back. Mm. Um, and the longevity of Sexy is, I'm actually more proud of. It's, you know, having it, it's recently been, uh, it's been rewritten, if you like, or interpolated is the term, with uh, Taylor Swift had a number one with it, Drake had a number one with it, and now Beyonce. And so I was proud of that as the original track, because very few songs have that, Cache, you know, they, they are few and far between. Doesn't mean whether you like the song or not, it's kind of irrelevant. Mm. Uh, they, they, it's just a matter of fact. And um, what's interesting, I think, is is we still get blanked, even though we've had as co as writers, we've still had we've had now four American number ones, and um, we still get blanked by um, PRS in the UK, Basca in the UK. The only people who are supportive is BMI. Um, and it's really odd, and um, it, it's, it's really strange. It's clear that we, that as writers, we've achieved quite a lot, and they will not, they will not address it. Sometimes they Fred, just don't like. They just don't like it. Sometimes Fred gets invites, and it says, um, "Dear Miss Fairbrass, would you like to sit in the room with an award-winning writer?" And then Fred goes back and says, "Well, actually, I am an award-winning writer, so I don't really." Need I, I sit in the room with one. Every day. I sit in the room with one every day. <laughs> Is this um? Has this come since your stance on the old shenanigans? No, 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 no. 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 It, 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 it's it, it's got worse. Uh, we've been cancelled from songwriting projects. We've been cancelled from a film. We were cancelled from two two commercials, all based on gigs. All based on oh, yeah, be, yeah um, loads of gigs cancelled. And it was all based on what they'd read in the press. No one ever bothered to contact us and say, look, what can you tell us what's going on? They believe what the Daily Mail said. They believe what the Express said. That they did. Well, the Express hasn't been too bad, actually. Yeah. Um, fairly, but they believe, the, they believe the Sun and the Eccentric and the, and the BBC. Um, and these people haven't been very honest with us, uh, or about us, rather. So um, we got cancelled based on other people's ability to uh, consume misinformation, not on the truth at all. Um, and so, with I, I, I think, but going back before uh, the pandemic, we 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 there is a in a sanctum with the music industry. If you kiss ass with the silver guys at the Silver Clare for the uh, the what's it the, the Prince Prince Fit Prince uh, Awards? Fun. Oh, the Duke of Edinburgh. The Duke of Edinburgh Awards and all these sort of things. Mm. There's loads of music events you can get involved in that you know, and and you get the you know you, you get a little tick against your name and we've we've never been invited to be honest with you um and if we had been invited we probably would have done it but um uh we've been pretty much ignored by the british music industry they really just don't yeah. take kindly to us also, and, they, and they never have because so just very quickly yeah. it goes back to i'm too sexy this all started then because they were they their um the, the british phonic phonic photographic industry which was represented by the major labels uh, made it very public that they thought I'm too sexy was a piece of shit and would never be success be successful. We proved them wrong, and to this very day they don't like that. They just don't. And we know all the words to "candle in the wind." I don't understand why we're not getting <laughs> <laughs> why we're not getting the attention that we deserve. I don't. Yeah. Know. Oh, it, no, it has I've, been a bit I've, uh, no, I've no idea, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, you should do that. If I can't just say that. Thing. We, we, we we did a photo shoot. Um, in, in also, um, we did a photo shoot in um, Germany in 2002 or one, no, 2001, and it was part of a um, it was part of an album cover shoot, but mostly part of an exhibition for photo for a, a photographer who was quite well in Germany. And he did a sort of a hot me thing where you take lots of Polaroids of someone's head and then you replace the Polaroids to change the face. And at one point we had we held an eye over an eye, and apparently that. 30, 20, 20 years, 21 years later, that proves that we are now Illuminati. That's how we got the Beyonce thing. That's how we got the Beyonce thing because, we're Illuminati. because she poured goat's blood over me and, uh, <laughs> and, and, we, and, and we had an awesome night. What a night that was. Yeah, I mean, these, the, 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 you know, the, the, the attempt, uh, I mean, I get called a conspiracy theory. God, I'm, I'm an amateur compared to these people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. We had a, we had a celebrity photographer on the show. I'm, I'm, I 
apologies i can't remember his name it was about two years ago and i just i tried to nail him on this and he was a little bit you could see he was a bit confused but he said when he's um you know he says he's like photo shooting samuel L. jackson mm. and he says then samuel you know starts doing like you know oh, this, that's this, sad, yeah. yeah and he's he, he doesn't know why <laughs> no okay <laughs> um you know I, I i think there's a reason it's a pyramid stage at glastonbury and there is lots, lots of people say lots you know people it's say gone that, yeah. from a folk festival mm. folk and blues yeah, to yeah. having you know the, yeah. the old uh yeah. you know if you hide your hand in your shirt you'll yeah, you'll, yeah. you'll yeah, the hidden hand yeah, yeah. It, 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 well, it, someone actually said to me the other day what are you talking about Although all, all the first festival main stage is a pyramid. Actually, no, they're not. No, no. We have played thousands of festivals all over the world. That's the only one I've ever seen. Mm. They're, they're always they're always the arc. All square. Occasionally mm. square, mm. but but quite often the arc as well. Yeah, yeah. The, the pyramid I, 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 rarely I, happens. I think one of the things that the COVID thing has done is it's it's I hope is it's made a lot of people realize that there's an awful lot more going on than they ever really imagined was going on. Whether it's Freemasonry, whether it's the Illuminati, whether it's uh, um, you know the um, the adrenochrome thing. Whether it's you know the the the, the, the um, oh, I don't know. You know, Sa Sabatini and Frankist cult. God, it goes on and on. Um, yes, it does. But it's the whole thing, is it? Yes, it's the whole thing. was really funny. I've got a. I'm a fan of the. Um, uh, 13th floor elevators who were a um psychedelic rock band in fact probably the first psychedelic rock band ever and they were they came out Austin Texas um mid 60s um and um they had the eye they had the third eye on their t-shirt and that's because back then it was seen as the inner light the inner sight that's what they believed in there was this other you know the pe pineal gland and or pineal gland yeah, yeah, how, yeah, how yeah. you pronounce it yeah and I, I wore the I wore this t-shirt once <laughs> People throw their prams. It's always out there, prams. You, Illuminati. It's, 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 it's 13 for elevators. You couldn't get a band further away from Illuminati if you paid them to. Bloody hell. Yeah, I think I think there's a, there's a whole load of uh, stuff going on now. That when We were in Gibraltar, and we got invited to a party. Oh, this, this was strange. This was very strange. We got invited to a party in Gibraltar by some, this old fella had, who was a, the richest man Sur in Gibraltar. Surrounded by lots of girls. Surrounded by lots of women. <laughs> And um, we didn't go. Um, and then we spoke to some people who did the next day. And what went on back there was was very freaky. And some of the people, they, they left because within 20 minutes of walking through the door, um, it, it didn't feel right. And, and one guy, um, he, he, he suddenly, he was looking down at his hands and he had blood all over his hands. Yeah. Nowhere else, yeah. nowhere else, it just appeared all over his hands. It, it did, yeah. I don't know what went on there, but it definitely wasn't. It no, wasn't right. It was. It, it was yeah, oh, the the, 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 the accounts. We yeah. uh, we didn't go because the girl who asked me freaked me out. I just thought I don't like you. There's something very dark about you. I'm not going. So we we we, we went and then we spoke to the guys who, the next morning. They said, "Man, you so pleased you didn't come. It was a freak show." Yeah. And uh, you know something like six or seven pregnant women walking around and and uh, upside down crosses. Well, and they brought puppies in. Then they bought a whole bunch of puppies. Yeah, pup. They took to puppies. clean the vibe. But the puppies also. were really young. Like yeah. should have been with their mum young, you know. Mm. And this was to clean the clean the vibe apparently. And um, and they said the whole atmosphere was very very peculiar. All the doors were locked; you couldn't get out the way you came in. Mm. So they found a fire escape and went through, got out through the car park. Um, but they said it was it was incredibly bizarre. And particularly this guy got covered in blood. He said there was no blood on the seat, no blood on no blood anywhere, but on my trousers and hand it just mm. appeared. He said it was the freakiest thing he's ever been to. And he's not a very um, you know, he's not into that thinking at no, all. He no, just no. said, he said, I'd like to come up with a, a rational explanation. He said, but so far I can't. Yeah. So yeah. There's definitely, you know, there's definitely weird stuff going on um, you know, all, all the time. I think mm. I'm more aware of it now than I was three years ago. Yeah. Mm. Um, and when I, when I look back to my childhood, I was completely trusting. Yes, we were. You know, yeah. absolutely. If somebody had a white coat on, they were to be trusted. If somebody mm. was a policeman, they were to be trusted. If, yeah. You know, it's and gone. now that's all gone. And I think... Mm. The, the absence of trust is going to be one of the most difficult things to rebuild. It is in yeah, politics, yeah, yeah. in medicine, in academia, all that area. Mm. Um, the you know the uh, the idea of actually being able to trust somebody. The minute police put cameras on their on their tunics, I thought, what does that tell you? Mm. Nobody trusts what they say. Yeah, that's what it tells you. It might be a good idea, and there's lots of really good reasons for doing it. But fundamentally, what it tells you is that we do not trust the coppers. Well, there was, there was, that's there was, what it is. I'm sure you saw it. There was footage of gay pride. 
There's yeah. this copper going up to a group of lesbian, <laughs> lesbians asking them to leave gay pride because the trans movement found the lesbians offensive. What? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, mate. What, as opposed to what the copper should be doing, he goes up to the trans people and say, wind your neck in. These people have as much right to be here as you have. I suggest you all get on and act like bloody adults. But he didn't do that. What he wanted to do was divide. And uh, I think that's that that level of that is a, a level of policing that is so yeah. It's still about scraping the bottom. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know who the copper is, but he he shouldn't be on the force if, it's, if that's if that's his best effort. Well, I remember when I was a kid, um, I was cycling to uh, to college, and the front wheel of my pedal bike went over the white line of the traffic lights. Just the fr- <laughs> just the front wheel, <laughs> you know, and uh, and there was a copper standing on the pavement, and he and he you know, signal for me to come over. Mm. And I just thought, oh, this is jail time. Obviously, I'm going to get absolutely hammered here. Because I was, you know, I, I trusted the copper. He was, to, to me, he was the... It all started to go wrong when Tony Blair said we must call the police a police f- uh, service. Yeah. It's not a police service. It's a police force. They enforce they enforce the, the law. That's right. Mm. And if they can't do that, they should find another job. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, fellas, because I've got such wonderfully kind and empathic um, chaps on my show. I'm just going to put my theory to you because hopefully then other people will see it. And then hopefully they'll see the nonsense of all of this. Right. right okay. And it goes something like this. Right. And and with respect to religion and blah, 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 it, it, it make of it what, 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 what you will. But okay. up up there one day in a great big void there was some dude, let's call him Mr. Universe, and he's all on his own because there's nothing else in the universe. He's bored. He's like, do you know what? I'm going gonna, gonna to do a bit of an experiment here, right? I'm going to take a bit of myself, I don't know, a rib, I'm gonna chuck that down, and I'm going to create a reaction. And what that's going to do is set something in place called evolution. And it's going to probably go, go well, it, it, it will go on to eternity. I want to see if this clever, complex, you know, uh, fusion of life and, 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 and uh, biology and physics and da, 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 can ever get to the point where it can create intelligent life. Obviously it has, right? Or not. He says, but, but my... The reason I put this thing into place is I want to know if this life will ever get smart enough to realize it's me. It's an extension of me. Right, okay. And even though you got these little funny pink things running around thinking they're humans, no, it's all part of the big picture called the universe. And so once you realize that we're all carbon molecular structures, right? The nonsense of thinking that there's a difference between us guys is like saying there's two rocks on the beach and we should call this one Fred and, you know, this one Richard and we'll give this one a punk rock haircut. This, let's give this dude an earring and give them... No, the point I'm getting to is once you realise we're all carbon molecular-based structure, we've been here from the dawn of time, we will be here to eternity, maybe not in this birth certificate identity that people deludedly refer to as Chris, mm. but but if you are me, Richard and Fred, and I am you, because we're the universe just experiencing itself in, in, in different bodies, then I love you and I hope you love me. Mm. And I want the absolute best for you. Because you're me and I, I'm you and I, mm. I, I know you want the best, the best for me. Right. And what that does, it, it takes down all the division, doesn't it? it well, the, 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 the problem is, though, Chris, is that there are thousands of people out there who see that acceptance or awakening as a weakness. And so what they do is they manipulate it. And that's what, you know, when you've got... Uh, you know, we, we, you know we, we're seeing at the moment the cost of living is going through the roof. The cost of living will not hit Jeff Bezos or 
or um, MPs or the or the banking fraternity or um, big tech, uh, it, it, it won't hit those people. It will hit it will hit plumbers and builders and the middle classes and and the lower income families. And that, and that's the problem. We there, there isn't that connection. I mean, there should be, and and I wish there was. But people more now than ever are focused on division. We've now got pronouns. You know, you have to describe. Are you are you him or her or she or sis? off what are you talking about you dry, dr- drill it right down there's one description human being that's it one description if you drill it right down but people don't want that that's not enough so then you've got man and woman okay fine and then then it starts color, skin color you know birthright blah 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 it, but if you actually drill it down we are we should be all the same sadly i think you could blame you could blame all of us because we're responsible um we've allowed it not to be that no, I think like if you're if you're interested in uh, controlling people and um, and maintaining your position as in, in the elites or whatever we call it, um, division is a really important tool that you it can is, use. Yeah. So whether it's the trans issue or whether it's to do with you know bi- um, non-binary or black and white or Jewish or ginger or fat and thin or it doesn't matter what it is, if you can find a way to divide people, and one really good way of dividing people, as we have seen in the last. Uh, in the last actually 40 or 50 years, first of all, it was HIV, you know, HIV negatives and the HIV pluses. Um, and now it's the, the, the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. Yeah, and skin colour. And skin colour. So yeah. division is, is at the heart of it. Tony Benn was absolutely right when he said, if you've got a well-educated and a well-fed populace, they're very hard to control and govern. Mm. So, what's the, so what does that tell you? It's important to keep the If you want to govern, it's important to keep the people fairly ignorant, give them one story, and make sure they are completely preoccupied all the time with things other than the crap you're doing. Yeah. Thanks. So they're, wor- they're worried about food. They're worried about security. They're worried about policing on the streets. They're worried about immigration. All these things keep people worried because then they won't see how utterly useless we are in the House of Commons. Also, it's what politicians do when things go tits up at home. They go abroad. <laughs> Uh, yes. Boris Johnson goes to um, um, Ukraine. Macron goes to Algiers. Um, um, Pelosi goes to China. Uh, the whole thing Biden goes to Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's as far as, that, can, oh, yeah, dear, as that's, allowed. That speech, man. Yeah, speech. and and I think all the you know these people. That's what they do. It, 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 it's by the playbook. You know that it's 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 all oh, look over there. You know, and uh, this it's this if you actually write down what's happening to this country at the moment, go through the last. 30 months, it is an abomination of what they've done to people. Abomination on the elderly, care homes, uh, small businesses, hospitality. I mean, the list is frigging endless. Mm. And the only people, the only people who are benefiting are uh, the mainstream media, big tech, obviously, and both those people have it in their interest to keep you at home. Because if you're at home, what are you going to do? You can turn on TV, you can turn on your radio, turn on your computer. Mm. Um, and, um, and, 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 you're, and, and you're going to lose community because and, you're... Exactly. Instead of instead of talking to your neighbour, you're grassing him up because he had five yes. people at his barbecue. That's exactly right. Which is why they. This is why churches closed. It's why there's the war on hospitality. It's why um, uh, big events that they're going to try and crush. Obviously, not their big events like Davos and Bilderberg and other. Their their big events would be fine. Um, but up at the big events for the for the, for the useless eaters. Uh, they, they they want to stamp out for, for a whole bunch of reasons. So they'll use climate change, and and if that doesn't work, they'll use COVID, and if that doesn't work, they use Omicron. It'll be some BS that they've that they've, they've pulled out the hat. Yeah, I mean back back in the day, 300, 400, 500 years ago, people were burned at the stake. Yeah, um, rather than relinquish on their beliefs. Many years later, the churches shut their doors because the government told them to. Mm. Mm. I mean, it is the, the lack of courage, the lack of spine, and the and the forgetting that the, their job is pastoral care to their community. That was their job. Um, it was extraordinary to me. I mean, the, the, right from the, as you say, from at every level, in, in, if you can't think of an organisation or an institution that hasn't been that hasn't disappointed in some way or other in the last yeah, two years. Yeah. Um, and then I saw Boris Johnson the other day defending, despite the evidence, that lockdowns were a good idea and the right thing to do. Because he hasn't got the, the nerve. He hasn't no. got, he's spineless. He doesn't have the guts, frankly, can I, can I to just, admit. Yeah, I'll just contribute. It, it, it's all about the ego again, isn't it? You, it know? Is, yeah. you yeah. have to get rid of your ego yeah, you to, 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 to seek your peace in life and, and enter Nirvana. And I woke up in Nirvana every single day. 
I've had three of the toughest months of my life. I'm just coming through it now. Did that stop me being it? No, absolutely not. Because my whole understanding is life's not supposed to be easy, but I'm perfect. I was born perfect. I don't need anybody telling me to put stuff in my body. Blah, blah, blah. All I've got to do is practice peace, love, kindness, empathy, and go out and live the dream. But when you take someone like Boris, I mean, and this is no, you know, we're not being fattest here, folks, but he, <laughs> oh, yeah. he's a bit of a, uh, a bit of a porker. Yeah. I'm guessing he has his liquid lunches. Yep. He's obesity avid. is, is for Chris, obesity is an issue. Can't it's mm. the elephant in the room, you know, li- literally. People people are too fat. Mm. You know, pe- pe- people he, he if you look at the people online giving advice, Piers Morgan, three chins. Um, Andrew Neal, too fat. Yeah. Steve Nolan, too fat. Mac Mick Ferrari, too fat. Mm. Julie Hartley Brewer, too mm. fat. These Fred, people are Fred, uh, my, my, my point is that all losing a spiritual battle they are. you cannot yeah. have the vibration that that sets you free yeah if you're not treating your temple in the bloody right yeah. way and it's if true. you uh, yeah so, so we, we, we used to manage gyms and i can tell you now from personal experience you, you don't have to go to a gym to be fit i'm just giving this an example and we were much bigger at the time we we're in good shape and i was a personal trainer people would come in what do you want to do oh i don't really want to i don't want to be big like you the guy would say i just want to you know tone up i say okay yeah so i'd get we had a black desk i'd get a white piece of chalk draw a button say if you could push that if that was a real button and you could get muscle like me by pushing it what would you do you said push it so i said so we've established you're lazy that's what we've established yeah. <laughs> so and I did this every time, and and it was a joke, you know. And and people, it, 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 it people fail to realise you can't out train your diet. You've got to be careful with what you eat. You've got to be responsible for your body, and you've got to give your body a chance at keeping its a bit at being healthy and, and, and your well being. And the very people that are handing out this medical advice, like the ones I mentioned, are a, an example of what not to do with your body. They are. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're, it's, I mean, when you see that thing of Steve Nolan walking around garages shouting at people, uh, I think I think it was Steve Nolan um, shouting at people put their mask on. He can barely walk. <laughs> he, he ought to be in a, on, on wheels. He can barely walk, and he's t- he's handing out advice. It is it, you know I wouldn't I wouldn't if I t- I wouldn't I wouldn't go to you know to Stevie Wonder for driving lessons. It's just you know he's a great songwriter. Driving maybe not so yeah. good at you know it, it just it's just, oh, Christ. I'm when when they shut the gyms. That was it, you know. Yeah. Instead of like, actually, what? Why don't you make vegetables like half price? Yeah. You know? Why don't yeah. you give some like nutritional information and and, yeah. and and teach people that the body's actually got a pH balance, and if you yeah. if you screw with it, you you, you are going to get ill a, yeah. a lot, and and yeah. that will lead to terminal illness. At, at mm. you know, and uh, fellas, listen, just, uh, uh, I just want to. I mean, your platinum selling artists and yep. you're the most humble guys in the music industry next alongside danny ramplin hello danny much love to yeah, you that, that much, is a good guy. much that, much that much is a love good guy. To, to to danny yep. Yep. um well the old substances you know anyone knows my history i've written like three memoirs now about um or at least two two of them were uh, about my battle with crystal meth and where yeah. it led me and I, I i have absolutely nothing negative to say about it I'm 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 an enlightened being, and if I hadn't lived my life the way I did, I I might not be an enlightened being, and I yeah, might yeah. I I might not have the most gorgeous son that is possible to right. bloody at. But for you boys, how you know I read something? Was it uh, one of the tabloids recently about your? Was it you, Fred, taxi driving? Ooh, that's right. I used to sell speed out back. Selling a bit, bit, bit of this and a bit yeah. of that. How yeah. how how did you? like keep on top of that in the celebrity w- world well i i didn't um after about 92 my 90, no, no, about 93 my cocaine use grew um exponentially uh, yeah, exponentially yeah and um <laughs> and, and i was i was fortunate because i wasn't addicted so what i could do i, I could stop and start whenever i wanted so i would do a few weeks on but i'll take it every day and then, then i'll take months off so I, I was very lucky not to have that addiction on the other hand i'm very unlucky because i should have been in rehab and you know, i should have kicked it into touch way before i did uh, but but because i had this ability to do it and not do it it, it kind of it, it made me 
sort of indulge in it in far longer than I probably should have done. Um, and, and I used it as a stimulant initially after shows or before shows. Then I started using it in my in recreational time. And then it became a big, bigger part of my life than it should have done. But only in, in, it wasn't every day, year in, year out. It was for a few days and stop, then, then for a couple of weeks and stop. And it was sort of very, very, very in, in, intermittent. So from that point of view, I was, I was quite lucky. But we were surrounded by people, you know, record companies would score gear for you, tour managers would, local promoters would. This Holiday like, hotels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this this idea that the record co- company, you know, uh, is, is very anti-drug, is it bollocks? It knows, it's anti-certain drugs. It doesn't like smack because you can't, you can't perform on smack really well. But, you know, uppers like co- cocaine, uh, you can perform fairly effectively on those um, and you see it all the time on TV you see you know and on tour you see bands u- using it all the time in one in one sense or another um, so I don't think um, it, it's um, I, I think the industry uh, lies to itself about that um, and, and as you know, Avicii um, testimony you know, sadly testament testified that you know he, he was he was pushed to breaking point because people are more interested in the in, in the, a lot of people are more interested in the bottom line than someone's well-being it's definitely it's definitely um, a youth thing I think if you're listening to your body yes, at all, as yeah, you get abs- older, absolutely. you, you realise that this can't, it can't go on. No, it can't go on. You know, when we first started, I could uh, I could get off my, do a gig, get off my head, have <laughs> sex with somebody and wake up at 10 o'clock in the morning and feel <laughs> fine. Crack on. You know, <laughs> now that, that, that simple sort of routine would take me about a month to get over. Yes. So I just, um, you know, and I like getting to bed early and I like reading and yeah. I, I like going to the gym. Yeah. I like all that stuff. So... Um, and also, there's nothing sadder, I don't think, than an aging drug addict on, you know, a musician who thinks it, who still thinks it's cool to get wasted. Well, um, and, to reclaim the youth. You know, it's, it, it, it tends. I think it's you know, when you're young, you can you can you can your body can deal with it. As you get older, you have to be a little bit more careful, and you have to be a bit more respectful of, of the body that you're occupying. Mm, yeah. You know? Avicii's a bit of a hero of mine. I, I, right. you, you, and I know a lot of people say if you could meet someone in history, who would it be? Uh, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, Winston mm-hmm. Churchill. I'd love to have met. Would you? I, okay. Uh, I'd, I, I I went through the dance area and, and uh, as as I'm sure you guys did and I it, it really changed my life you know I learned so much for it I made a twat of myself probably most of the time <laughs> but you know I, I mean I never danced before and now I love dancing mm. and I I love to do it at every single opportunity and at 52 folks I still can't be <laughs> exactly. but exactly. when I see Avicii there and he's just he's banging it out mm. you know but then of course. There was suggestion that shenanigans went on there, wasn't yes, there? there? You know, yeah, yeah. Fr- I, I, friends, don't know the, I don't know the details, and yeah. so I can't speculate. Mm. No, I I wouldn't speculate. But the yeah. uh, one, what, he was just this awesome guy, folks. He was a sweet Swedish chap. He was a musical genius. He pulled artists together, and he did amalgamations. And I I, list, I love to listen to them when I run every morning. And then um, he took a photo of his fans. I think he was like in Dubai or somewhere, but mm. don't don't quote me on that. Yeah. And and then that later that day, allegedly, yeah, you know, right. yeah. took him yeah. took him took himself out mm. the game. And yeah, he had. I, I understand he had depression problems. Obviously, I think being on the road on your own yeah. is a miserable place, particularly for girls, but male or female, it's, it's lonely. Mm. We've been fortunate enough to have each other, and we generally work with people we have a good relationship with. Um, we don't like yes men particularly, uh, so we try and have a more of an adult. You like yes women, though. Yeah. <laughs> I used to like. I used to like yes women. That's true. That's right. I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> guilty as charged. Yeah. So um, does that does that get Fred? Does that get problematic? I mean, what do you mean? Well, when you've you know got women or men throwing themselves at you, it, 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 can that get you down a? Yeah, you know. Yes, it did. It did. I, I, I abused it. Um, I, I didn't abuse them. I, didn't, I need to say I abused the situation. You were not abused. I exploited the situation. I was very promiscuous. I was single. I was fortunate enough to meet some very beautiful women, and I took advantage of that. Then after uh, a couple of years, you start to think, actually, I just want someone to hang out with I can talk to. I mean, I know yeah, you've got nice tits and everything, but you're a bit dim. <laughs> so so I, I might need someone I can actually have a conversation with. And then I was fortunate up fortunate enough to meet my wife in the uh, early noughties and, and, and we'll stay together. So, um, yeah, I don't really, um, I, 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 I was, uh, um, I, I did, I was pretty, I was pretty um, stereotypical of, you know, pop star, pop star takes drugs, marries page three girls, sleeps with lots of models and gets a bit messed up. I was, I was a bit, you know, pretty standard issue in that way, you know. Mm. 
Where, 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 where are you guys from? Where, where did you grow up? Both born in London. We grew up in East Grinstead. I was born in South East London. Richard was born in South West London. And we grew up in East Grinstead. Yeah. yeah. I was born in South East London. Where were you? Where about? Well, Bromley. Oh, Bromley. Oh, I suppose that I was, uh, I know I, Bromley. I was, was um, 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 Sydney and Penge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I won't pretend I know it very well. I left no, when, not I was, right. not when right. I was very young, but I, I yeah. just, I, I, I did wonder if we had a bit of a connection there. Yeah. 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 Guys, um, let, Oh, sorry, yeah, go on. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we've got another one coming in. We're going to have to wind up yeah. quite soon. Yep. Can I just ask you one last thing? Like, yes, mate. Yeah. You, 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 you've, you've performed for like Nelson Mandela, the Queen, you know, mm. all the, but who's like the geezer or the girly that you've had a real bloody good crack with? Um, whether, Michael whether Hutchins. That, whether Michael, that be... Hutch- Michael Hutchins? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Michael, Michael Hutchins was lovely. Um, 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 uh, Paula Wilcox was lovely. Um, Jason Donovan yeah. very, was very sweet, very funny, was very funny. Yeah. Um, who else did we? Um, Actually, when we met Paul McCartney, he was very nice. Paul McCartney was very nice for all the, you know. For yeah, he was. His COVID nonsense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And who else? Um, that's about it, really. Um, not not many, to be honest with you. No. Sam Fox was, was. We met her many times. She was a real sweetheart. We asked all the time um, about you know music, famous musician friends and all that kind of don't stuff. Really have we many. just don't have any. No. no. We just no. don't mix in that kind of thing, you know. I mean, um, people who are nice on just you meet them in passing in yeah. a hotel lobby or something. Yeah. There's loads of those. Yeah, we met Shaggy and uh, 50 Cent and um, uh, um, uh, who's it? Um, Pit Balls, all sorts of people we've met. Mm. And, and then on, on a one to one, you know, over a 30 second high mate house again, very, very nice people. There are some that are just rude from the beginning. Um, but generally speaking, yeah, we met Diane Keaton and uh, Johnny Depp oh, and Mickey Rourke, and they're all really sweet. Living Newton John, Living Newton John, lovely people. Mm. Yeah, yeah. On, on that first image, yeah, uh, first impression, yeah. Fellas, listen. You wrote a hit single called "I'm Too Sexy," and I really? tell you, I tell you what, it's physically impossible to listen to that and not feel fucking sexy. And I, I, <laughs> I, I, I think that's that can't not be a bad thing it's a good thing <laughs> um, to feel sexy guys it's been an a- absolute honor thank you absolutely as i said to you at the beginning on behalf of me and my boy uh this is where i get emotional but you 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 you, you know you know what i'm trying to say yeah yeah you know, keep keep the good fight for anyone watching it, it's all right to step outside in the mainstream it's it all is. right to do the right thing it's all right to go in a supermarket and go do you know what fuck that bullshit yeah. You know, it, 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 it it's okay. It, it okay. means you're living your dream, and and it's fine. Enough, and 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 nothing will come of it. Nothing exactly. will come of it anyway. And think for yourself. Think always, for yourself. always think yeah. for yourself. Absolutely right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Fred and That's Richard, a, listen. Don't you, I, I, I? I won't keep you after the show. I'm just going to click it, click it okay. o- o- off now. Friends at home, I hope you've loved this as much as I have. I hope so um, too. Massive love to you all. If you could Thank please you. like Thank and you. subscribe, that would be great. Yeah. Massive love, love to the boys. Please, you know, and extend that to your families. Um, let's chat again at some point. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. That'd be interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, and let's hope- do that. Good hope point. to hook up with you up in up in the smoke at, at, at some time and we'll we'll maybe you know we'll do something good <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> Indeed, the dancing. have a bit of a dance yeah oh, that's what Chris love to everybody Thank cheers you, cheers cheers, cheers cheers